Okay, I thought I would try to do a little video about my uh, new sawmill, just kind of going over some of the features. This is a mostly wooden construction. Got wooden rails, uh, flat wheel on one side, uh, V groove wheel on this side. Got some uh, tube steel clamps to hold the cant. Got a, this is a, a 12 by 14 inch cant that's in it right now. 22 inch diameter plywood wheels. It's about a 14 foot, 3 inch, something like that long. Uh, one and a quarter by 0 .042, I think it is, uh, saw blade. Um, has a uh, lubrication drip system with that tank there in the back. Going down to this, uh, it's really hard to see right now, but it's just a bundle of cloth with that uh, held on top of the blade with the, the tube just dripping onto it. I'll go around back and show more of it. Uh, guide bearings here. Uh, there's a spherical set of spherical washers there to help me do a little bit of adjusting, tilting it forward and back a bit. Same thing on this adjustable one. Uh, I made this uh, designed this for 30 inches of clearance and about 8 inches of uh, board height, like if I was going to cut a big beam. Um, I'm glad I designed it that big because. Uh, trees are a little bit ugly and they have you know things sticking out the side of them limbs and such like that and it uh, I can't get as much into this as I thought I might be able to anyway this one this side is adjustable to slide left or right and I had it slid over for what was a uh, 18 inch base diameter log that's this cant that ended up now at about 12 14 inches uh, this uses a trailer Axle hubs for both uh, both ends. Um, there's a 1,000. Let me see here. There we go. We got an 8 inch uh, spring length, uh, 5.86 max compression, 547 pounds per inch, and I have it set at a 7 inch length, so it's got 547 pounds of uh, spring force holding the blade taunt. And I could easily go more, but it's, that seems to be fine. Uh, let me show you the tank on the back. Uh, tank is uh, one gallon of uh, winter antifreeze uh, windshield. Wind, pardon me, windshield washer fluid uh, with uh, an ounce of dishwashing de detergent, a dishwashing soap liquid added to it and that has been doing a good job of keeping the blade clean. A uh, little needle valve right there. Uh, so I, I flip the lever on to start the flow and the needle valve is just controlling it to like a drip a second uh, which that plus the the whole mess of cloth there on the on the top of the blade being sort of soggy to start with uh, it's been doing good. I, I cut a few boards initially without that and it's like nope nope I gotta stop this is a mess <laughs> added it in uh, there's a when I'm adjusting up and down I, there's a clamp that big wheel up there loosens a clamp to the main post got one of those in both sides one there and then one here um, and then once I loosen those up I can um, unlatch my uh, catch there and then go around. Basically each little notch is one sixteenth of an inch on this wheel and so I can count up quarter inches and half inches and I can if I want to go up a sixteenth or down a sixteenth I can I can do that fine of an adjustment. Uh, the tracking adjustment on the take up is that that one bolt bolt right here um, and that has worked fine I have a built in a little bit of adjustment to to adjust the tilt of the blade uh, which that's the plate right here with a pivot point and then underneath there is an adjustment bolt right there that uh, sets this basically I let the uh, 
uh, the wheel kind of fall as it was going to, sliding between a couple of boards in there, and so it's naturally tilted out just a tiny bit, and so then I use that plate to, to bring it back where it's 90 degrees to the track. I have the same thing on both sides. Uh, there's the other one right there behind the blade. Uh, I like the uh, the lifting with the two cables that uh, just lets me um, be sure that both sides are coming up the same without any uncertainty. And then I like, also like this adjustment with the uh, turnbuckle that uh, once I got it on the track and decided that one side was a quarter inch higher than the other, I can just adjust that real easily without loosening everything up. And so that, that has worked really, really well. Uh, this is a uh, four horsepower, it's like a little thing here has the brake horsepower, BHP. I, I've done some internet research on this and I think that is basically equivalent to just a standard horsepower, but there seems to be lots of controversy about that on the internet. But uh, it is adequate for cutting these logs. Um, Got to slow down a little bit when I go through knots. Like there's a little knotty section there where I had to slow down just a bit. Another knotty section here. I have not cut, tried to cut hardwood yet. Uh, my blade speed is 3,000 feet per minute with the four horsepower motor seems to be okay. Uh, I think a little bit more horsepower would be good, maybe a you know, five or a six. Uh, this is an electric. Um, and so it actually, I think, from what I understand, you'd have to have like maybe a five or six gas powered motor to horsepower to, to equal a, an electric motor. It seems to do this a little better. Uh, start stop switch there. Uh, this is actually has, is a 240 volt uh, motor, and so I, I I'm using 12 gauge regular extension cords, but then back all the way back inside the house, I have a uh, kind of a conversion extension cord that has one end with a, the connector for 240 volts, and the other end is 120. So, oh, the. Uh, the little pushing rail on the back seems to work good. I can't really push it from the sides uh, unless I had two people pushing. And, uh, but that uh, seems to do good to just give you a place to push without getting so close to the blade. And yes, I might add guards at some point. I wanted to see if the whole thing was going to work first before I started uh, adding on kind of accessories that were not functional, at least as far as the thing working or not working. Uh, mostly oak construction. Uh, the, there's a few miscellaneous odds and ends uh, scattered around uh, that are pine or poplar or you know, whatever else was, was to hand. But so, this is uh, some combination of the uh, just different things I saw on the internet. Um, I'm not quite sure about the uh, plywood here. I, I actually, oh, by the way, I've cast uh, aluminum uh, motor mount. It could have been just a big wooden block, but I thought I'd do it out of cast aluminum. Uh, the, the plywood was not flat, and so there was a little bit of wobble in this thing. And uh, I might have, if I was going to do it again, I would seriously consider like an MDF, which is more guaranteed to be flat. And so I could stack up all my pieces together and not be struggling with the uh, plywood being about a quarter inch out of flat over the diameter of this thing. Uh, bicycle inner tube tire stretched over the uh, surface. You can see the holes there where I balanced it. Okay, can't think of anything else to say.